a recording. Awesome. Okay. I want to record this for the people who are obviously at their other jobs today. You're welcome for me looking so great and <laughs> having my messy life in my background, but listen, you do wish you gotta do what's up. Um, okay. I'm really excited about this month. I have a lot of stuff I want to get through. If you are elite and above and you're on Fran's call, this is basically going to be a very similar kick in the booty that she gave us, but I just want our whole team to hear it because I really am sensing a lot of people are about to miss the boat. <laughs> like, let's just call it what it is. It's been a slow summer. People, things have started opening back up. People are showing up to paddle boarding. I always say that because I love paddle boarding. Paddle boarding, or they are going to barbecues. Like they are going out and they're having fun and they're enjoying going to the movies again. And they're enjoying like going places, going to the mall and blah, 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 blah. There's also people who have just flat out checked out. Who here has people on their team that you're like, I think they checked out. Yeah. Who here has had a bunch of people quit on their team this summer? Yeah. Look how normal it is. Okay. So just a reminder, you guys, the concerning thing about this is, listen, we're all human. I'm glad everyone's been enjoying their summer. I'm so glad that we're getting more freedoms back. I'm so excited about all of that. But what is concerning is all the people who are checked out. You guys, I extended this specific call to Katie Williams' entire team to our entire team, every single leg on all of my leaders teams. And we have 29 people live right now. So just to give you perspective, it is not just you. It is not just your team. Okay. We can take a deep breath. And honestly, it just is what it is, baby. This is business and multi-level marketing, which a lot of us are still healing from. Okay. Let's just call it what it is. MLM mindset. We are still healing from that. But if you look at traditional business, this is very normal. You have months where you thrive and then you have months where you don't thrive. You have turnover, high turnover rates in some seasons, and then you have no one quitting and loyal as forever. They're going to stick with you for a long time, right? So this is normal, you guys, but I don't want you guys to miss the boat because this is what our, especially our newbies are seeing. They saw this all summer. Maybe they joined in the middle of it. This is all they're seeing. They have no, they have no idea that we're about to go, whoop, we're about to go into specifically from the president himself, company-wide momentum. Yeah, we're already in momentum. How cool is that? Well, we're going to go ahead and add more momentum on top of that. It's going to be massive. When you have seen the post from Fran and Marielle and what have you, that we are going to match our sales in September and October alone, that we have already had this entire year so far. It's not a joke. And even the advisory board and the equity council have said they honestly don't know everything. But what they have seen is absolutely shocking. It is game changing. But Jake and Mark have told them that they haven't even given them all the details. So seriously, if you're lacking belief, you're like, I'll believe it when I see it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. A lot of you guys are not going to get to ride this wave. Fran talked about in her call the other night. She said she sees it all the time. She lives on the beach. She sees it with her daughter all the time, like boogie boarding or surfing. People wait until the wave, like her daughter, like stands there and watches the wave come, like watches that wave come. And then when the wave gets there, she starts paddling. Well, it misses, she misses it. The wave goes right underneath her and keeps going. She didn't get enough momentum. She didn't get an action until the wave was already here and she missed the wave. You guys, our company is about to experience company-wide momentum. It is a hundred percent up to you. If you want a, in on that wave, if you want a piece of it. 100% up to you. And that requires you to get into action now. Okay. Now, a lot of us are waiting for motivation. This call is all about motivation. Who here feels like they're just lacking the drive they once had? Who here feels like they're lacking the motivation or the inspiration they once had? Absolutely. I'm here to crush your dreams from a former personal trainer. Motivation is a fat, ugly myth. <laughs> like, honestly, I, at least speaking for me, I can feel really motivated one day and I'll go ham, but then I guarantee I'm going to pendulum swing the opposite direction for probably the rest of my life. Like I'll enjoy it for like a month. I'll go crazy because I'm motivated and excited. And then all of a sudden the motivation goes away. And then I'm like, ah, I'd rather eat some vinegar chips on my couch. Like that sounds better. Um, that's really normal, you guys, but motivation's a myth. The only way to get motivation oftentimes is actually to get into action first. You have to get into action, start seeing results, get into action, start feeling better. Start feeling accomplished, feeling proud of yourself, keeping promises to yourself, and then you're going to feel the motivation. All right. So let's talk about 
Sorry, I have notes, hold on. Okay, so we need to talk about how self-discipline. Now, I just wanna take a second and let y'all know, if you know the Enneagram, I'm a seven. Um, if you don't know the Enneagram, I am, I'm pretty sure I'm undiagnosed like ADD. Like I've always been the class clown. I never focused. I had horrible grades. Like literally, I think I graduated. This is so embarrassing. Graduated like a 2.7 GPA, like so bad because I do not have any self-discipline naturally was not born that way. It is not an innate gift of mine, but I built my business to a platinum level and I'm maintaining a platinum level because I had to teach myself self-discipline. I had to instill that. Um, and yes, it is like pulling fingernails just straight off my fingers, you guys. <laughs> In some ways, reports are boring. Like all of this stuff is so boring, but it's 100% necessary. You have to discipline yourself or else you are not going to be a successful business owner. I know so many of you on this call, you want to be six figure income earners. You guys, if you have even hit elite at this company, you are making more than majority of people in network marketing, which requires a level of grit, which requires a level of self-discipline, which requires a level of work ethic that majority of people in network marketing do not have. So first of all, take a second and pat yourself on the back because you're literally incredible. Um, Mandy, I literally thought you were patting yourself on the back right then, <laughs> but I think you were just itching your back. Oh, were you? Oh, nice. Okay. Um, good. Yeah, you should, you should pat yourselves on the back. You guys, that is huge. That really is massive. And I don't want us to ever get caught up watching people go gold and go platinum and go Ruby and all this stuff. And like, feel like elite or bronze isn't a massive, massive deal because it totally is. It's a huge deal. But if you want to be a six figure income earner, have you ever been one before? A lot of us, I don't think we have. And so that requires us to do things that we've never done before as well, right? So we have to discipline ourselves. There are people, just so we're clear, just like we watched before already, I was one of this wave, right? There's gonna be people who join this month and are making $15,000 by the end of this year. Do not be surprised. I'm serious, like don't be surprised. This is that kind of wave of momentum we're walking into right now. It begins this month. People are signing up this month and those people are going to rock this. They're going to rock this couple of months and they're going to be making crazy money by the end of the year. Okay. There's going to be multiple people like that. I want to talk about, and I feel like it's come up a lot with convention and stuff too. So the timing we have here, we talk about it all the time, right? The timing we have, we're in crazy momentum coming out of ground floor. Something I want you to realize is that specifically what you talk about, it won't be here forever, okay? The other thing I want to talk about, I personally do not believe in coincidences. I personally am just not a coincidence believer, which means there are, I think, what do we have? Less than 80,000 ambassadors worldwide right now, which means there's like, I don't know, 5 billion other people or more in this, in this, in this whole world that are not in the position that you are in. There's no coincidence that you are here right now for a time such as this. There's no coincidence that you were exposed to this opportunity and you had this nudge you couldn't deny. There, there's no coincidence that you're on your this, you're on this training call right now. It's not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. If you believe in coincidences, you know, whatever, then this isn't powerful. But it's powerful for me when I remind myself of that. The timing right with this company, it's also not a coincidence that you are here for this timing. Do not take it for granted. Do not squander it. Specifically, when we talk about timing, like with convention, what I mentioned earlier is being at events is so important right now more than ever. Being at events is important, period. You will never catch me missing a big event unless like a serious like family emergency happened or something, honestly. Like there's no way. I traveled except for this month. I traveled every single month since December, I think, or January for this business. There hasn't been one month that's gone by that I haven't traveled. Majority of them have been on an airplane, have been a whole day of travel there and a whole day of travel back. I will never miss one. But right now, because of the timing we're in, look at our corporate partners. We have Kelly Allred. We have Jake Spencer. We have Mark Wilson who we get to rub elbows with. We get to literally walk up and be like, hi, my name is Casey Wheeler. I signed up this month. Like, I just really wanted to come up, introduce myself and shake your hand. I really appreciate what you've done here. I really appreciate the opportunity you've given my family. Like whatever the case may be, 
if who here has come from another multi-level marketing company before okay now keep your hand up if you have had that opportunity at your last company right <laughs> none of us have like literally nobody it's so special it's so rare that's incredible is that crazy? That's crazy to me. I remember going in February and I was like, I walked up to Jake Spencer and I was like, my name is Casey. I signed up in uh, December. I am now this rank. Thank you so much for, you know, being an awesome trainer. I like, I love when that man speaks about business. He's very, very business savvy, very intelligent. I got to go up and shake his hand. Then I got to take some of my team and I got to say, this is my teammate. So-and-so, which by the way, if you're at convention, I fully intend to do with you as well introduce you to everybody I possibly can. This is my teammate so-and-so. They're this rank. They signed up this month. They're so excited to meet you. I just wanted to introduce you so you guys could shake hands and take a picture together. That is so special. Do not squander it. Oh my gosh. I literally, I could just like go on for 15,000 years. I am like so passionate about that specifically. Obviously I'm a chronic friend maker. Like I believe in connections and stuff, but we're going to even talk a little bit more about edification and how powerful that is. Take advantage of this, you guys, seriously, seriously. Now, I want to be very honest. I love to binge watch Netflix. I do. Ooh, I do. I do. I do. Ooh. After bedtime, where my mama's at? After bedtime is the best time. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> I love to sit on my couch and watch The Blacklist specifically. I think we're on like season seven. I don't even know. Watch The Blacklist with Zach. And I would love to just set my phone down and check out holy mackerel and disconnect from my business. I would like to finish the rest of the 13 seasons or something psychotic like that. Um, and put my phone on the whole time and disconnect from my business, but I refuse to, and you want to know why it's because of the timing we're in. <laughs> I will never, I have never experienced something like this. I have never experienced team momentum, personal momentum, company momentum. And I have been in this industry for four years next month. I've only been part of this company since December. This is just a blip in time. The next three to five years that we are projected to have less, which I guarantee is less than three to five years at this point, probably closer to three, is a blip in time. If I can afford to sacrifice putting my phone down while watching a TV show and still be available for you guys, literally, if you are like messaging me after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I guarantee the blacklist is playing in the background. But I'm like this the whole time, looking up. What's more important? My family's income, my family's livelihood, your guys' income, your guys' livelihood, your guys' business, your leadership development. What is more important? Or my show, right? That's how I personally look at it. I did not come into this business to be the only one winning, people. I came into this business because I saw everybody can win. So if I can take the time and pour into you guys and serve you guys and equip you guys, on how to be the best leaders you can be, the best business owners you can be, bet your bottom freaking dollar, homegirl gonna hook it up, okay? I want, I still, I still want 10 six-figure earners on my team by the end of this year. I still want 10. Raise your hand if you're gonna be one of them. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, queen. Dude, this post-workout bun is so ferocious and it's kind of like twerking for me right now. I'm in a twerk mood. I'm feeling real amped about what's coming. So I just want you guys to catch on to that. Um, but anyways, I really want to just encourage you guys, if you can, in your day-to-day, -day, in your minute by minute, obviously I believe in rest. <laughs> obviously I believe in all that, but I don't believe in disconnecting. I don't believe in disconnecting from your business. That doesn't mean don't sh shut your phone off at night when you go to bed. That doesn't mean like don't enjoy family dinners undistracted. It means don't disconnect don't disconnect. There are people who signed up with you guys that trust you. You told them you would help them make 750 bucks in their first full 30 days. They believed you and they joined you. Oh, servant leadership. You guys, I'm getting, I'm getting fiery. I'm getting fiery. Um, but seriously, it just, I like you guys trust me. You guys came here with a financial need. I came here with a financial need. I literally was making the only money my family brought in from my last company, 2000 bucks a month. I put that aside and I came over here, literally turning that $2,000 into zero 
with one click of a computer button, whatever, a mouse, a phone, I don't know, whatever, a click, one click, okay. <laughs> I turned that into zero and I came over here with a dire financial need. I will be danged if you guys didn't do something similar and I'm going to abandon you. Like, that's just not what, that's just not who I am. That's not the kind of leader I want to be known for. And I know all of you who I have been able to talk to, I've had the privilege of training in a smaller group setting, all of the people I've had the privilege of meeting, you guys are the same caliber of leaders because that's our team culture. That's why you're here because you're good people. You have good hearts. You're servant leaders. Let's do the dang thing. You know what I'm saying? What up? Everybody clap. Unless you have a sleeping baby next to you. Yes. Uh, let's do it. Okay. So I just want to make sure you guys don't allow yourself to get disconnected. And I know a lot of your teams have had their head out of the game this summer. I also know that a lot of you have had your head out of the game this summer, not calling you out. I'm not trying to make, like, make you feel bad at all. Hello, we're human beings. I took like an entire week off of Instagram because I was like dying of the COVID. Um, but I want to remind you to get back in the game, get your head back in the game. And there literally is not going to be any better time than right this second. And when you do this, not only is your team going to do the same, you get your head back in the game, your team will get their heads back in the game. But when you do this, you are also ding, 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 going to attract business partners who also are like this. If your head isn't in the game, the business, uh, business partners you're attracting likely won't have their head in the game. If your head is in the game, you will be attracting business partners that got their head in the game. What up? Okay. So let's talk about practicals, what to do daily. Okay. Number one, first and foremost, because there's been a lot of people in management mode this summer, get and stay in phase one. Literally, there's not really any time to not be in phase one. You guys have heard me talk about it before. If you haven't, you're probably new. And I'm so excited you're here. I'm really, really pumped you guys are here. Um, but I have talked about the 40, 40, 20 rule. Who has heard me talk about that? Right. What is, if you could drop in the comments, what is your first 40% of your business supposed to be spent on? Yeah. Mary Jane said you, September said you, recruiting your own business, your personal business. Correct. This is called phase one. This is where when you first sit down before you check the team chats, you're sitting down, you're following up with your potentials, you're reaching out to people that you're developing relationships with, or you talk to about the business, you're getting your Instagram post up, your reel up to get more eyes on your page. You are posting your face and your stories, talking about this opportunity and how freaking excited you are for the craziness. You don't even know that is coming next month, but you know it's coming. It's like the rumble before the earthquake, right? That is what you're doing for the first 40% of your business. Then when you check your chats, that is also the filter you're running it through. What chats are for your personal business first? Then the second 40% is you spend it with your leaders. The last 20% with the people who are not necessarily leaders per se, or they're kind of like half in, half out, um, the extra chats that you're in, et cetera. That's what you get to next. Some days you won't even get to that, to be honest with you, if you're like about to go in a growth season, which we all are. But you need to stay in phase one. That is wildly important. The reasons why you bring in new people, you're bringing in new volume, and you're showing your team what it looks like to do that. Because honestly, if you're bringing in like one person every like four months, 50% of people basically quit. They go into what Fran calls witness protection. They ghost you. They disappear. All of a sudden their auto ships off and they're not responding to your messages. Who has had one of those? I can't even tell you how many personal and sponsored ambassadors I have that have done that to me. I can't even, I can't even count. It's normal. You guys, about 50% of the people you bring in every month are probably going to quit. It just is what it is. So your best option is to just cast that net as wide as you can. Expose as many people as you can daily. Stay in phase one. Honestly, sit and think, when is the last time you spent about 80% of your time growing your personal business? Leaders, when was the last time you sat down and actually prioritized your own recruiting first before you responded to your team? before you supported your team, before you even served your team. I know this can sound totally selfish, but literally if you're not doing it, your team is looking to you and they have no idea how to do it. 
if you aren't setting those boundaries, your team is looking to you as an example, because just like I talk about this all the time as a mama, our kids don't do what we say. They do what we do. (laughs) They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't eat candy before dinner. I mean, literally don't get me started on food freedom and what have you, but maybe you're saying like, don't eat candy before dinner, but then like you're just smashing some Jolly Ranchers before dinner. They're going to do what you're doing. Not do what you say, you guys, that's how it works. That's the same thing for your team, right? Don't just tell them what to do show them what to do. It's way more powerful. And that is what duplicates down into your team. 110%. If there's no new blood, there's no new excitement. If your team's been really stagnant, you need to bring in new people, show them that new excitement. Every new person comes in with their own like wave of personal momentum. That's just normal. Someone comes in, they're exposing their network for the very first time. That's bringing in natural momentum, right? Bring in new people, get new excitement, get new momentum. Something that um, we're going to be doing, well, actually, I'll talk about that in a second. Let's talk about that in a second. Okay, so the second thing I want you to be doing, okay, is the value of edification is getting lost in our team. Raise your hand if you have never heard the word edify or edification before. Okay. No, it's seriously. Yeah, that's totally fine. Don't feel bad for not having heard of it. That's my bad. So edification, it basically means like when you edify a leader. So let's say you're trying to get a potential into a three-way chat or onto a three-way Zoom. You're hyping up your leader. You're building a bridge between your potential and that person. So if you're like, oh my gosh, so-and-so, I have to connect you to my friend, Susie. Honestly, she's such a cool down to earth street shooter. She's also been really successful here. She's been here for like six months and she's already bringing in like 1700 bucks a month. It's crazy. Um, I've got to get you connected. I'm still really new and I'm still learning a lot. So I know that she'll have more experience. She'll have more answers. If you've been here and you could probably answer every question, you still say that you still do that. Um, and not only that, like for me, I've actually had three potential calls with one with Fran, two with Brittany this last like week and a half and how I connected them. As I said, I really want you, if you're really interested in this, I want to connect you with my friend, Brittany. She's really amazing. We actually moved to Cal or moved to Tennessee from California the same week. She's a mom of two girls, but she's also making like literal gangster money here. (laughs) So I know that her input will be really valuable for you to hear from, but I also really want you to get a feel for our team culture. Make sure it's a really good fit for you. Make sure that you are a good fit for it. Um, And I think that on Zoom calls, that's the best way to do that. You're edifying. I built Brittany up all of a sudden. If you have never met Brittany before, you're like, she sounds really cool. Like she sounds pretty legit, right? Like, oh, if Casey's friends with her, like she's gotta be chill, right? She's gotta be fun. She obviously gotta accept you as you are on trainings that you record when you looking like a bum, right? So <laughs> just kidding guys, I look fabulous, I know. Um, <laughs> so make sure that you are connecting people to people because people sign up with you because they see that there's also another amazing mentor. They sign up with you because they see they're not the only one that has to have all the answers to the questions. They don't have, have to be the only one that knows everything. They don't have to have the time to research everything. They see that no matter where they get put, they're going to have so many layers of help and mentorship. When you and your people can say to, this goes back to the timing we have, when you can say to people, I have direct contact with the top producer in the company. When I can tell people, yeah, my friend, Brittany, she's actually one of three people who have gone the highest in our compensation plan, which we haven't even gone to the top of our compensation plan yet. People are like, that doesn't compute, especially if they've come from another company or experience with another company. Top income earners at other companies are not accessible even if they're in your upline. If you're not coming from another network marketing company, you don't know what I'm talking about, but I need you to hear that. Top income earners are not accessible. You guys, literally all three of them, Marielle is in our upline, Fran is in our upline, Brittany is in our upline. They are all available to all of you. You go tell them that when you meet them at convention. Marielle, I I just love your training so much. My name is so-and-so. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm in your downline, like obviously way down in your downline. But I just had to shake your hand. Can I take a picture with you, please? You guys, that is insane. That's so cool. That's so rare. When you can show people that, that's amazing. How about this one? When you can say, I have direct contact, I have direct access to Kelly Allred, the leadership or the director of leadership success. I have direct access to my president, Jake Spencer. He actually does like trainings for my team. 
sometimes, like he pops on himself. Yeah, I'm silent on purpose. Look at me. That is so crazy. <laughs> If you seriously, if you've come from another network marketing company, you know how powerful that is when you can show people that you have access like that. Okay, sign me up. Yeah, that's so crazy. You guys take advantage, capitalize on this. Remember that it will not be like this forever. I can't say that enough. So you need to use it. We are in a company and a time frame where that is standard but it will not be forever. That's already standard here and not at other companies, but it won't be like that forever. So a good example is um, if you guys got to be at convention in February because of COVID restrictions and what have you, um, I think they were only allowed to have like two or 300 people there. It was incredible. We had so much access to all the people. Like I literally looked at Kelly Allred at one point and I said, who in this room do I need to force my friendship on? Who would my benefit, like who would I benefit? How would my business benefit from who the most? She gave me like a list of people. I got to go up and be like, hey, honestly, Kelly Allred told me that I need to be your friend. My name's Casey. It's so good to meet you. Shook their hand. We found something in common. We chatted for a while. Guess what? I got to ask that person to train my team. And they said, yes. They recognized my face and my name in their Facebook inbox, their messenger inbox. They opened the message because they knew me. They remembered we talked about whatever then they were more inclined to respond to me because they knew me. We got along. We had a relationship. And they said, oh my gosh, I would love to. When works. That's incredible because a lot of people in this company have been here for longer or they've been in the industry longer. They have way more experience, way more knowledge than me. They have different gifts and talents than me. I love pouring into you guys, but I also recognize a lot of you are not going to totally understand what they're not going to pick up what I'm putting down all the time. You're not going to smell what I'm stepping in. Right. Sometimes personalities clash just because that's how it goes. Or sometimes, um, the different way that it's said or a different perspective can be shared. And that's super impactful. Whereas like, I may just not have that perspective or that opportunity to share it in that light. I am not too proud to be like, yo friend, can you come in and, and train my team? That's really, really powerful and so, so cool. So remember that. Now at this convention, that's even going to be a little different. We have like, I think two or 3,000 people coming now. So it's going to be different, but I also want to put it in perspective of, I think at my last company, there was like 30,000. <laughs> there was like no access to like anybody. Like I barely had access to my own like five levels up upline. You know what I'm saying? Like it is such a different vibe. Two to 3,000 people is a lot more than at February convention, but it is like a heck of a lot less than at other companies at their convention. But it's going to keep getting bigger every convention, you guys. It's go our company is already growing. I think our company had about 40,000 ambassadors worldwide when I signed up. And now we have less than 80,000 seven months later. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? It's growing like crazy. And we're about to double in sales in just two months. Do you know how many new ambassadors are coming in? An unbelievable amount. It's crazy. So don't miss this. Don't miss this. Okay. Edify your upline or edify an upline you have a relationship with. Edify them, connect people to them, show them what they have in common. Okay. The third thing we should be doing every single day. You guys are not going to like this. I remember when I first heard this slash realized this reports. Who here can say who, okay. Who here checks their reports once a month or less? Okay. You guys can be honest, literally no judgment. I'm not going to like hop in your builder chat and be like, Rah! okay. <laughs> so one month or less, I saw a couple hands, right? Okay. Who here checks like every two ish weeks, twice a month. Okay. Who here checks every week? Awesome. Okay. Who here checks every day? Awesome. I bet you guys have like the type A personalities. I see Aaron and I'm like, Aaron is so organized. Like <laughs> she's so on top of things. That's perfect. Awesome. I need you to be checking. Well, I don't, it's not that I need you to, you need to be checking your reports every single day. Honestly, this is non-negotiable as a business owner. I'm just going to be super blunt about it. This requires a level of grit and determination that entrepreneurs need to have. 
I, I don't know how else to say it. Like you guys always know I'm coming from a place of love. Um, but if you are hesitating to do the reports, they're overwhelming. You don't understand them like blah, blah, blah. Can you imagine if Jake or Mark went into the office one day and were like, the reports are just too overwhelming. I'm not going to go through them today. Can you imagine? <laughs> what about like, even like the president of Apple, like the president of Apple, like walks in, he's like, I just don't like whatever their equivalent of a back office is. I don't even know. I just don't even want to look at the numbers today. It just sounds so overwhelming. I just don't have the time. I've got back-to-back -back meetings all day. I don't have the time. Right. That's, that there's no shot that's going to happen. We have to know what's going in and we have to know what's going out. Pulling the reports is a non-negotiable. So let me give you some specific ones to be uh, pulling. Um, Oh, also, I want to just add a note. Don't leave this to just the leaders on your team. So like for me, I, I'm actually, we're actively equipping our elites and above to train you guys, you guys who are uh, executive or below, they're actually all doing a training. If they haven't already, they're going to be doing it before Thursday this week, where they're training you on specifically one of the reports. Um, and I'm going to talk about that report in a second, but I also do not just put that on their shoulders. It helps me immensely if they're able to like manage that for their team, but that's not like their full responsibility. That's also my business. So as leaders, we should also be taking responsibility and reaching out to even the complete strangers in our organization. I literally have been doing this since I started my business. It sounds super cringy, super awkward. I remember physically my face cringing the first like 10 messages I sent to total strangers. I have, I actually have a placement leg. Um, one of my legs is a placement leg from Brittany Hitch. And literally, I don't only not only know those people, but I do not know anyone that they signed up with. Like, other than Brittany, I'm like, that's our only connection. Guarantee, I, I have no idea who the people are that she signed up, like probably 99% of them. So me reaching out, I was like, we'll just see. I just, just send it, just hit send. Like, <laughs> so weird. But don't make it weird. Connect with them. Make a relationship with them. They're in your organization, man. Be their friend. Offer additional support. And no other leader on your team, no toes should be getting stepped on. It's actually very weird if you feel like you're, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say, it's very bizarre if you think your toes, like if you're like, ow, my toes hurt. When one of your leaders or one of your people reach out to someone else in your organization that you personally brought in, like that's crazy. Like they get an additional line of support. Like if anything that makes your life way easier. So no one's toes should be feeling stepped on because of the layout of our compensation plan. And it's really beneficial to everybody. So I even had leaders who had people reach out and the people felt weird. They were like, well, I actually work with so-and-so like, you know, I'm good. And I was like, okay, like, I just wanted to offer additional support. Like, I'm not trying to take over as your sponsor, you know? And they're like, awesome. Thanks so much. It's so sweet. They went to their leader and their leader messaged me. I literally had like three different leaders be like, Hey, I heard you reached out to so-and-so. Thank you so much. They said, thank you. I love that. Like, that's so incredible. Like our culture here. Culture is so important. We're here to protect Q culture and you really should be already thinking about and protecting your team culture. What is your team culture, right? I take that so seriously. My leaders know I talk about that. I love our team culture. Even when I'm screening people or prospecting people, I'm asking myself, does this person match the team culture? Because if they don't, they're not gonna thrive as well as they could, right? So reports to run number one, auto ship, specifically looking for failed auto ship reports. Okay. A lot of people have no idea. If you have new people who come in, they may not even know how to set up their auto ship. That may not be something in your welcome text. I know some of you guys do have that in your initial steps, which is so cool, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. Don't assume that they just didn't do it. Like reach out to them and be like, Hey, what happened here? Whatever. Right then some people have no idea. Like I have done this so many times I have lost my debit card. Well, or I get like fraudulent activity in my old debit card all the time. So I had to like constantly get a new card and I, I just am not organized. So I didn't keep track of like what all automatically came off that card. Right. That happens to a lot of people. Like <laughs> I've reached out to so many people in my prior company and here where I've been like, Hey, like, I don't know if this is intentional, a glitch in the system or like what happened. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I forgot to switch my card. I got a new card. You just did them a favor, okay? So check on those failed auto ships, okay? Shoot for your auto ships, like your percentage of how many auto ships go out to close to 70%, honestly. That is like solid. Like when you check your auto ship report every month, at the beginning of every month, you're seeing how much volume is going out by the 15th because that's when auto ships are done running, right? 
you can see exactly how much volume will be in your organization and you know exactly how much more you'll need to hit whatever goal is next, right? So it's really, really great to shoot for 70% because again, we have a lot of people who come in and then join witness protection or come in and then quit, like whatever. So it may not always be 100%. Easier to keep 100% earlier in your business rather than later, of course. But if you can shoot for 70%, freaking fabulous, okay? So reach out to strangers on your team. Also, you can check this other report called your executive time clock report. Okay, I believe that's under quick reports as well. Um, and you're going to want to check who your new ads are. Like I would really check this. Like if you have a bigger team, check it every single day and see what new ads do not have auto ship set up. But even if you look at your executive time clock report, just look through it, see whose auto ship is not set up because the executive time clock is their first full 30 days. You really, really want them to have their auto ship. Like they should, like that should be non-negotiable. They should have been screened and known that that was part of it. Um, but don't assume that they're like intentionally turning it off. Like ask them. So like an example script, you guys can either whip out your phone and voice record or video record, or um, I can also drop this, like uh, copy and paste it into the Q Mafia chat too. So I'll do both those. I'll give you guys a second if you want to record it. I know that works better for some people. Okay, three, two, one. Hey, so-and-so, welcome to Q. I am so excited you decided to partner with us. I am really passionate about helping people earn a paycheck that is life-changing as quickly as possible. I just noticed your auto ship isn't turned on. This will help you earn points on, for free product. This will help you be commission qualified so you can get your weekly paycheck. Can I help you get this turned on? Done. So simple. You don't know who this person is. It's not like you're reaching out to granny and you have to be like, have reservations about it. It's a total stranger. It's not a big deal. If it feels like a big deal, accept that it feels like a big deal and do it anyway. You know what I mean? Feel the fear and do it anyway. That's my life motto. One of five, actually. Let's just get over it. Honestly, we have to kind of get over the awkward. <laughs> like at some point in your business, you have to get over the awkward. You have to get over the fear. You have to get over the nerves because people's opinions don't pay your bills right? Even people who are within your organization and don't have their auto ships on, it doesn't pay your bills. You, your work pays your bills. The volume in your organization pays your bills. Do what you can be a good steward with your business guys. You can do this. Remind yourself of your why. And let's just get uncomfortable. Let's just get uncomfortable. Let's just do it. Let's try it on for size, throw poop at the wall, see what sticks, right? We're not committed. <laughs> All right. The last report I want to tell you guys about is called a close to rank report. I honestly am not sure if this is a report that is in your quick reports, um, but it is something that you should be able to access from your silver leader. Your silver or above leader has a corporate liaison that they can get specific reports from. Um, and so you can ask them for it because actually we should be running those reports anyways ourselves. Um, and then they can go ahead and fill you in on who's in your organization that you can reach out to. Now, what the close to rank report is, is basically exactly like it sounds, is showing you who is close to ranking. Can you believe there's actually people who have one personally sponsored ambassador? We need two, right? To unlock the comp plan to rank up. They have one personally sponsored ambassador and like enough OV to go executive. I have seen it so many times in my organization actually, and they have no idea. They don't have a clue. And so they're not working. They're not hustling to get that weekly paycheck of 250 bucks plus their bonus. So I reach out to those people and say, I don't know if you looked in your back office lately, but you literally are sitting on enough volume to go executive as soon as you sign up one more person. Who can I get on a call with this week with you? Like who, who have you been in conversations with that we can get on a Zoom together about? I cannot tell you how many people in my organization have had that happen. It is crazy. So, so look in there and see if that's the case. There may be a lot of people who are actually only one order away from ranking up, from going from 50 bucks a month to hundred bucks a month or hundred to 250 a month or 250 to 750 a month. Massive life-changing income. And they're only one order away and they have no idea. So they're not working. Reach out to those people, let them know, be like, I don't know if you saw, but you're literally an order away from getting a $500 raise. I'm sorry, I could find an order. I could go ahead and throw on my stories like, y'all, let me tell you about the sleep spray though and get one more order of a few sleep sprays or something, right? I mean, that's crazy down. So check that close to rank report. If that is not in your quick reports, then ask your silver upline to hook you up, okay? All right, let's talk about, I know this is a little bit long of a training. I'm going to wrap it up as like quickly as I can, you guys. 
but there's just too much good stuff to share with you guys. I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes our trainings have to be a little longer than a half an hour. I know, I know it's painful, but I want you guys to plan on having a packed schedule after convention. Bleh. Like a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, but convention is supposed to be like the magnificent time. And then I get to like rest because I ranked up finally, or I double ranked or blah, blah, blah. No, I'm sorry to be the bubble burster. <laughs> I'm sorry to be the bubble burster. I think I worked way harder for months after convention. Um, at least the month after I worked my freaking patootie off, um, even more than I did before convention. Um, and this is really important because you're going to have a lot of people coming in a lot of new customers, a lot of new ambassadors in your organization. You can't just like be like, okay, cool. That was fun. Bruh, they signed up with your organization to make $750 in their first whole 30 days, right? <laughs> so don't just abandon them like that. So I want to talk about something. Now, this literally Fran made this call elite and above because she wanted to kind of talk about this. I just really honestly think the world of a lot of our leaders who are not even elite yet. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead. You guys know me, straight shooter, super transparent. I see a lot of people selling their convention tickets. I am absolutely understanding there have been different, there's been mandates at jobs. There has been, um, you know, family emergencies who have, that have come up. There has been like all kinds of things that have come up that are like legit reasons why all of a sudden you cannot come now. Okay. My concern is there's such a large number that it's probably not likely that a hundred percent of people are not coming because of a very legitimate reason. Okay, I'm just throwing that out there. Could be wrong. It could be 100%, okay? Um, I just wanna talk about how some people are missing the vision and they're going to miss out on catching the vision before the biggest wave of momentum our company has ever seen. Again, people have seen this. They think it's just gonna keep continuing. No, no, no. This is business, not multi-level marketing, blah, blah, blah. It's business. We're business owners. It's going like this, but it's going to come back up. It's going to come back up. If your people are lacking that vision, that is your responsibility. This is me taking responsibility to let you guys know that. If that's you, please know it's coming. And I don't want you to miss out. If it's people on your team who are not on this call, why are they not on this call? If it is people on your team who are not catching the vision, why are they not catching the vision? Has anyone even told them what's coming? Has anyone put it in their individual builder chat yet? Has anyone got on a Zoom recently to check in with them and let them know what's coming? If not, that is something you need to seriously be thinking about. And I would think about it literally today and make a list of people you're gonna tell about that, okay? If you notice a lot of people on your team specifically selling their tickets, why? If it's childcare, help them find a solution. There's so many reasons. There's, and I talk about there. There's so many legitimate reasons to put your business down, but we can also put them into excuses. They can also be considered excuses. If you're a true business owner, please be prioritized being at this event. I've already talked a lot about it, about how important it is. When you come to next convention, probably in February of next year, I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to introduce you to Jake Spencer. I can't, I can't guarantee it because we're going to over, we're going to over double. We're probably going to quadruple at that point, but I can, I can tell you that I can introduce you to him next month. I feel a lot more comfortable with my odds there. Okay. Okay. So if that's you, please reconsider of selling your ticket um, or move around what you need to move around, figure it out. Literally just message me. If you're struggling with something, if you can't afford a ticket, message me. <laughs> I will figure something out. Okay. <laughs> I will do my best to figure something out. So if that's you, please reconsider, move things around. There's so many people with space in their hotel rooms or Airbnbs. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you until I'm blue in the face. Literally I'm running out of breath. Um, and if you have extra tickets, if anyone here has bought extra tickets, I bought extra tickets, recruit people, do not sell them, recruit people and give them to them. Say, we have an event, even in the screening process, we have an event next month. I recognize it's in three weeks. 
if you can get the time off work and you can get there, you can have this ticket. I will even reach out. I know I have team members who have space in their hotel rooms, which will cut the cost significantly. We can split Ubers. We can make this as affordable as possible. I don't want you to miss this and tell them all the reasons that I told you on this call. If you have extra tickets, give them away. Hello, tax write-off. Hello, business investment. If you are in a financial situation where you're like, that's not possible, hello, message me. Okay? It's all God's money, people. It's all God's money. Let's do this, okay? So I just want you guys to really be thinking about that. So after convention, we need to be having daily opportunity calls. I'm not misspeaking. We need to have daily power hours. There's going to be a lot of people coming in, so let's provide for them. Now, Fran specifically, her team, she is actually organizing to set up daily power hours, daily off calls. If you didn't see, I did drop this in the Q Mafia chat. Um, and so our, the movement page, I know that we're, ha we're struggling with um, getting people added. Um, I read something about, I just need to message Fran personally, but I feel like she has like tens of thousands of people in her organization. So what I'm just going to do instead in partnership with the admins of our Facebook page, I'm going to just be plugging in all of the events from the movement page into Q Mafia. Okay. Um, so you can just check the Q Mafia Facebook page for the available daily op calls and the available daily power hours. Um, they're very important, I think, especially for new people, because it helps people feel a sense of community. It gets them into action. It gives them new ideas, new inspiration, et cetera. We already have, literally, Aaron is actually leading a power hour this Saturday. It's in Q Mafia events. Then the next Saturday, Brie Figgins is leading an or a power hour in Saturday on the next Saturday. It's already in Q Mafia events. The Saturday after that, the lovely Mary Jane is actually leading a power hour. It is already in Q Mafia events. Check the events tab in the Q Mafia Facebook page if you're not doing that. Let's start because I'm going to be hooking it up. What up? Okay. Um, so we need to be doing that daily. Keep people in action. Keep them excited. Keep them plugged into community. Now, I want to be very clear. They will not work if you do not work. <laughs> um, showing up on opportunity calls is awesome. Honestly, I love that. It's getting your feet wet. You're getting ready to lead your own. Um, you're learning more information. Um, but if you're not inviting, it's not going to literally move any needle in your business. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to bring in new people. It's not going to produce more volume. It's not going to get more cheeks in the seats at convention. So definitely be inviting to these op calls. Um, I honestly set a goal for myself every single day that there is an op call available. I invite one person. If I am already in that groove and I can invite more than one person, dope. I do it. But I just give myself a really simple goal to start with. I invite one person every day to the op call available that day. I challenge you guys to do the same. <clears throat> power hours are not going to work if you do not get into action with them. Sometimes power hours are a little mini training and it's totally awesome. But at some point in the power hour or immediately after your screen should go black and you should be working. If your screen isn't going black, it's because you're on your laptop and you're working on your phone. Okay. If you're not putting the action behind it, and this also goes for the momentum chat where I'm dropping homework. If you're not sending the messages with the scripts that I'm giving you in there, or you're not doing the Instagram daily engagement, or you're not doing the posts every day, do not expect your business to grow. Do not expect to catch the wave that's coming next month. Just being really honest with you guys, because I have done both. I have just kind of attended stuff. There's like call groupies. <laughs> this is what Fran calls it. It's super funny. People who show up on everything. You love to see them there. Honestly, I really consider those people leaders. They have leadership quality, but if they're not producing, that's showing that something's going wrong. That's showing that they're not getting into action, right? So just a reminder, um, and I am not getting political here, but we have already kind of talked about it a little bit in some of the chats. Um, there is probably a lot of mandates coming. There's a lot of people. I actually have a lot of friends, close friends who are having to leave their jobs or being fired from their jobs because of some things happening, right? I know we all know what I'm talking about. I just don't want to get political. It's just not an appropriate place this work. Um, however, there's mandates that are coming. There's people genuinely terrified they're going to lose their jobs. There's people terrified that they're going to lose their income and they are looking for opportunities to have more control over that. Guess what, guys? We have a potential solution. Recognizing that network marketing or Q sciences is not for everybody, it should be put on everybody's radar as an option. People are feeling more and more like they don't have options. 
we have one for them and they can explore that and decide if it's what's best for them. Even if not long-term, what if this is what's needed for them in the, in the inter, interim, whatever I'm trying to say, in the meantime of them moving to the next career or getting their job back or whatever, it's an option for them. Do not miss that. Don't miss that. Okay. The next thing I want you to have on your radar, this might be crazy. Okay. I want you to plan an in-person event after convention. <clears throat> I literally, I think Steph is on this call. I literally am probably traveling to Chicago at some point, <laughs> like literally this winter. I want to go to Chicago. I've never been. And Steph is on my team and she lives in Chicago, Chicago. I love how she says it. Um, <laughs> she lives in Chicago and I'm like, let's do an event. Invite your people, invite your coworkers, invite your friends. Events don't have to be like convention. Events don't have to be like the regional events. It can literally be like, hey, we're having a bachelor night. Bring your own bottle of wine or bring your own tea. We're just going to hang out. I, we, I have a couple people who are my business partners. We want to take an opportunity before the show or after the show to share with you guys about what we're doing here, but it'll only take a little bit of time. And honestly, we just want to get together and have some friends. Literally my Knoxville team, some of them are on this call. What, what? Um, I live an hour away from Knoxville. I literally have like no friends since I've moved here. <laughs> I'm trying so hard, but I have no friends. We're going to do an in-person event and they're going to be like, listen, I'm not gonna lie. My friend, Casey, she's my business partner, but also she just needs friends. So we're going to talk a little bit about the business opportunity, but literally she just wants friends. So, and it's honestly very true. I just want friends, <laughs> please. Uh. Um, and so we're going to be doing an event like that. Like keep it casual, have fun. If you already do something, just include more people and then just let them know, Hey, we're going to be going over the business opportunity for about like maybe a half an hour where you're just going to do an in-person op call basically. Right. Um, but we really like, we're going to have snacks or we're going to have food or we're going to watch this show or, you know, we're going to have a movie night, like whatever. Okay. Keep it chill, but plan in-person events after convention. Okay. If you can, if you're a leader and you can travel for this, I highly recommend it because hello, how cool is it to mark another city off of your list, your bucket list? That's my personal thing. Okay. <clears throat> We're wrapping it up guys. I just want to want to remind you guys, think about what your grit level is. If it's not up to the level you want it to be, let's up it. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. And we are all, we all have one thing in common, whether you have your specific organization or it is a cross line or to somebody else entirely way far away distant from you in Q Sciences, we all have the same goal. We want this company to grow and thrive because we want our businesses to grow and thrive. We came here with a financial need and a financial goal. We all want to make it work. We're all in this together. So utilize your resources and capitalize on what we have here. Take advantage of everything. Any opportunity, I'm like, gosh, that'd get me a little further ahead. I asked for it. I asked actually to speak at convention. I'm not, obviously I'm not speaking at convention, which is totally fine. I will next time. <laughs> what up? Just calling it out. Um, but I asked, I literally messaged people at corporate and I messaged Marielle, Fran and Brittany. And I said, you guys, I want to speak at convention. If you hear anything about it, anyone asks you about me, can you please put in a word for me? I ask for the opportunities because I'm here to take advantage of what we have as company. The NorCal regional event I did in May, I asked for that opportunity to speak. I, I cannot say enough because of the timing we have in this company. Ask for what you want. Worst case, you get told no. And you can ask again next time when you have more production, you're at a higher rank, you have more leadership skills, you're more equipped for the job that you're asking for. Why not? Just keep doing it. Like, who cares? I was terrified at the thought of speaking at convention. It's kind of a relief I'm not. But at the same time, I still want to do it. I'm going to ask again next year. Worst case scenario, I'm going to get told no again. Then I'll ask again next year. It's all gravy. So take advantage of everything you have at your fingertips and take advantage now because you're not going to have as great a chances even six months from now because we will be such a bigger company. Also, I want to mentally prepare all of you. This is the last thing. This is actually extremely important because I think a lot of us didn't actually see this summer season coming. We didn't see the slowness. We didn't see the people checking out and quitting coming. Guess what? It's going to happen again. We're going to have another season where people are going to quit. You are not going to be in production. You're probably going to drop a rank. You need to be mentally prepared for that. This is my job to prepare you for that. Dropping ranks is extremely normal in network marketing. 
Um, I'm pretty sure every single person at the top of our compensation plan has dropped a rank, maybe not Brittany, but I have no idea. Um, just cause she's not been here for very long, but dropping ranks is very normal. Um, having people quit in mass amounts is very normal. Um, <clears throat> and so I just want you guys to be prepared roughly about December is when that should be happening. December should be another slow season. So think about it. We have August, September, October, November. We still, some of us have to kind of get that, that wave back up here this month. Okay. Get that wave back up right in these next four months, these four months we have ahead of us as hard as you can. So that way December is less of a blow for you and for your team. Okay. Be running with your team, um, but prepare for it because that is business. You guys, it's, it's not abnormal. It doesn't mean anything's wrong at all. It doesn't mean that you need to quit or leave or your team needs to quit or leave. It's just business. There's good seasons, there's mediocre seasons, and there's bad seasons. But what goes up must come down. And literally, just think of it as a bounce ball because what goes down must come up, especially in a company that's in this crazy momentum. So don't miss out on your piece of the wave, you guys. Okay, longest training ever. I love you all so much. I'll go ahead and post um, the recording in our chat today. Uh, and if you had a question that I did not look at this chat box at all the entire time, but I love, love, love the participation. You guys are literally the best. You guys literally hype me up. I love seeing your faces and I love seeing the chat. Um, if you had questions that didn't get answered, please drop it in the chat. I will be happy to answer them. Um, and let's go ahead and kick some butt and have some fun. I'm so excited. Don't miss this. I cannot wait to hug you guys. I cannot wait to meet a lot of you guys next month. I will see you in like three weeks. Okay. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.